Thank you for tuning in to The Sure Word. I'm your host, Sister Leia Gabor. We are a world in crisis. What humanity needs isn't mere material wealth, nor popularity, nor power, nor recognition. Man's greatest need is a savior. Now what kind of a savior do we need? Let us join Pastor Jonathan for you all as we explore today's topic entitled, Why Do We Need a Savior? Why do we need a Savior? Why do we need to have somebody rescue us, deliver us from whatever it is that is, you know, seeking our ruin or downfall? The Messianic hope. Messianic hope is resting on the belief a strong belief that a savior one day will appear and come and save the day for the nation of israel even before the early beginnings of our uh, civilization people were already calling out to god man was already sending out sos help rescue they were already dialing 911. They were already calling upon the Lord. They were already imploring the guidance of the divine providence. They were already calling for a liberator, a deliverer, and a savior. It wasn't only the Hebrews who were interested to see the Messiah. The world was also longing for a Messiah. No wonder that prayer is something that all major world religions are doing. Because man in his heart of hearts know that on his own, he's weak. That on his own devices and mechanisms, he is inutile and unable at best. Man knows that he needed a savior, a savior, and salvation is man's universal need. It is not a car, it is not money, it is not fame, it is not notoriety, it is not power or wealth. It is salvation that is man's greatest need. The world needs a savior, the world needs true salvation. But what kind of a savior man needs? What kind of a savior that I need, that you need? I'm going to give you three characteristics of a savior that we needed these days. Number one, abilities. Number two, intention. Number three, presence. These are the three qualities that will surely uh, characterize the Savior that we all needed to receive. A Savior must be someone who is able. You do not want somebody to save you when in the end you will be the one to save him. You do not want a Savior who is insufficient, inadequate, who is weak, who is dumb, who is really uh, nothing to offer. Let's say a person is drowning. Do you want somebody who will save you and say, you know, I'm just uh, going to pray for you. Uh, say hi to the fishes, uh, you know, under the ocean. No, you want somebody who will save you who can swim. Who can literally save you. And you know what? Speaking of saving somebody... Uh, at least someone who is drowning, uh, I had the privilege to save, uh, I believe, four people already from drowning. And I praise the Lord, these people that I have saved are still alive. Yep, I'm not kidding. And the reason I was able to save them from drowning, because I know how to swim. Yes. If you need a Savior, the Savior must be able. He must be able. He must be capable. He must have the strength. He must have the power. 
to really save you and rescue you. This is the Savior that you need. Unfortunately, the saviors of the world are all weak and inutile and insufficient and literally have nothing to offer. The false messiahs of this world are weak. They do not have the ability. The religious leaders who say they are the savior of mankind really have nothing to offer. Because they are weak. They are helpless as we are. But thanks be to God, Jesus Christ came into the picture. The Son of God, the Messiah, the Anointed One came into the picture. And what the world's saviors could not do, what the false messiahs could only promise, Christ Jesus gave it to us. He is our Savior. He is our Deliverer. He did that kind of salvation in the most powerful and unconventional of ways. When Christ Jesus came, He did not come with an army. He did not come with tanks and missiles and all these armaments of war. No, He came just by Himself. And all he did was come. And all the enemies that are arrayed against us, all the forces of hell and all the forces of demons that are arrayed against us, Jesus Christ defeated all of them. Because Jesus Christ is able, He is powerful, and He is almighty. He came. He saw. He conquered. All by himself. And he did it in the most wonderful of ways. The book of Ephesians chapter 2 verses 5 and 8. We see how Christ Jesus saved us from our sins. It says there, it is by grace you have been saved. Continuing on. And God raised us up with Christ. Seated us with him in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus. In order that the coming ages he might show the incomparable riches of his grace. Expressed in his kindness to us in Christ Jesus. And then look at verse 8. For it is by grace you have been saved. By grace you have been saved. That's how powerful grace is. That is how abling grace is. That is how empowering grace is. That no matter how weak you are, by grace you will become strong. Amen. No matter how far you are from God, if you will cling to His grace, you will be brought nearer and closer to God. No matter how dead you are, by grace you will come back to life. No matter how hopeless you are, by grace you can be hopeful. Grace. Grace is powerful. Grace can save a sinner. Grace can change you, a believer who is serving the Lord. It is not by works. It is not by our righteous deeds. Look at that in 2 Timothy chapter 1 in verse 9 and Titus chapter 3 verse 5. He saved us. He delivered us. Called us to a holy life. Not because of anything we have done. But because of His own purpose and grace, 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 grace. Your grace is enough. Amen. Say to the one next to you, God's grace is enough. To God be the glory. That's why in the church, we must stand by grace. How many among you are living by grace? Say amen. amen. Say to the one next again to you, I'm living by grace. Amen. That's why we are being changed. We are being transformed. True grace is transforming. True grace is transforming. And thanks be to God because it is by grace we have been saved. The righteous life we couldn't live. The perfect standard we couldn't come up to 
Christ Jesus did it for us. That is why we do not need to earn salvation. You do not need to break a sweat to be saved. It's a gift from God. You do not work for your gift. You do not work for a present. You simply receive it. Everything that we needed to be saved, everything we needed to be saved, Jesus Christ has done it for us. That is why Jesus Christ is our able Savior. Number two, you want a Savior who is not only able, you want a Savior who has the right intention. People say, I'm going to help you, I'm going to treat you as a friend, but ultimately, they have some ulterior motives. Their motives are not right. And so how many people are abused? How many people are exploited? I love you. I'm going to marry you so that I can have a punching bag. <laughs> you know. I'm going to marry you so that somebody will always make my breakfast, wash my clothes, massage my foot. That's why I'm Filipina say, are you looking for a wife or a servant? <laughs> Too many saviors aren't really saviors. They are exploiters. But not the Savior that I know. Amen. Jesus, God, is our Savior. Amen. And He has the purest of intention. Amen. Is there anything that can be purer than God's love? The Bible says, for God so loved the world. To God be the glory. All He wanted to do is just look for us, search for us, and find us, and embrace us, and, and just, you know, give what He thinks we deserve. The love of God is the purest of intentions. Everything He does is love. Everything he does is out of his care for us. Peter said, cast your cares upon me because he cares for us. Amen. The love of God. Amen. That's why even though we are sinners, it is the Lord Jesus who searches for us. Amen. We are like sheep, sheep that have gone astray. We are like sheep that have gone astray. Each one going to his own way. But Jesus Christ came and individually searched and looked. He individually, he carried out a search and rescue operation. Individually, he looked for us. He moved heaven and earth just to save us. And he has placed us in his fold, in his flock, the church. And he's telling us, don't you go, uh, you know, somewhere else again. Just stay put. In the church, you will be well cared. In the church, you will be uh, nourished. It is in the church we can better experience the love of Christ. Amen. Don't you know that Christ loves the world? Amen. Can I hear an amen? amen? But he loves the church amen. especially. Ephesians chapter 5, Christ gave himself up for the church, to care for the church, to nurture the church. You will feel the love of the leaders, the shepherds, the brothers and the sisters, the invisible nourishing presence of the Holy Spirit. Without the guiding, controlling power of the culture of holiness in the church. A number of us, if not all of us, would go back to our lives in sin and in filth. Thanks be to God. God is our God who has the ability and He has the intention. Amen. Number three, you want a Savior who has 
the presence. What do I mean by that? You know, how can you be a savior if you're always late? Hmm? That is why, we all know that, 911, they will go against the traffic just to save a person. Amen? They will do everything they can. How many here are nurses? How many here don't care you're not your your nurse? Can I hear an amen? Have you seen nurses in an emergency? A doctor is having a <laughs> heart attack and stroke. Have you seen a nurse who's like that? What's bugging you? You, you can't breathe? Hold on, hold on. <laughs> no, a savior, a deliverer, paramedics, they're always rushing to save. They want to be right at the moment before things could get out of hand. I thank God. I thank God. Because when Christ came, He came in the perfect time. He came. He came in the perfect time, in the fullness of time. Galatians 4, 4. When the fullness of time came, when everything is set all right and perfect, He came. He came to our world and saved us. We could have been trampled by the enemy. We could have been killed by the enemy. We could have been destroyed. But thanks be to God, here we are. We are still alive. We're still kicking. That sin that, was the, that the enemy was, was really seeking to be the nail in your coffin. Christ Jesus took it to himself. Took it upon himself. The punishment that would have sent you to eternal lake of fire. Christ Jesus took it upon himself. In the nick of time. He wasn't late. He wasn't early. He's perfect. That's why the Bible says, He makes things beautiful in His time. And because God is always present, we do not need to panic. We do not need to worry. Because He is always there. Amen? He will never leave us. He will never forsake us. But then again, this is something that we don't get, do we? We don't get this. Many of us are still panicking. Many of us are still worrying. Many of us are saying, I need to get things under control. I have to do this. I, you know, I understand that you've got to be responsible. But you must also understand that there are things that only God can do for you. Amen. You must understand the demarcation point. You want life? Serve the author of life. Amen. You want healing? Do not put in the back seat the healer. Put him first. And he will always be there for us. Amen. Our God is present. Amen. He is never absent. He, he, he is never distracted. He, he is never confused. He never gets confused. He always knows how to be there for us. Even in the, 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 those times in your life that you think he was late, he wasn't. How many among you have felt that way? As if God somehow had forsaken you and had left you. You know what? That is a wrong take. Sometimes God allows us to go through a lot of questions. Seemingly, circumstances beyond our control. And sometimes we begin to think he's not there. Oh, God is not there. My child is sick. My spouse is sick. My finances aren't there anymore. I don't have money anymore. No, he is there. He's actually waiting for you to move to put your faith in him. It is when you have faith in him, he will reveal more himself. 
it is not by worrying, it is not by panicking, it is not by being a cynic or a skeptic that will activate His power and presence. It is our faith. These are the qualities we need to be in a Savior. And thanks be to God, Christ Jesus is our only Savior. Jesus is the only world Savior because He is the only one who has the ability, the intention, and He is the one who will always be there for us. We need a Savior. I need a Savior. No matter who you are today, you need a Savior. You will never outgrow your need for a Savior. Whether you are a believer, a Christian, or somebody who is walking away from the Lord, or somebody who has no faith in God, you need a Savior. But you don't need a Savior of, the, of this world. You need a Savior from heaven. Many people today are turning to other people for salvation. People today are turning to other people. Help me, help me, rescue me. They turn to the one in the White House. They turn to the people in, in, in Congress. They turn to the people in Wall Street. They turn to the people in the religious sanctuary. But salvation cannot be found in religious sanctuary. Right. Salvation cannot be found in the halls of our Congress, in the halls of the White House. It cannot be found in the executive offices of Wall Street. It can only be found in Christ Jesus, who is our only Lord and Savior. He is our only Savior. It is not an army. It is not some money or wealth. Our only Savior is Christ Jesus. We need Him. We needed Him more than ever before. Today also, we must understand, we must know Jesus for who He is. No amount of religiosity, no amount of piety. Salvation can only be in Christ and when we put our faith in Him, when we believe Him for who He is, then we will be truly saved. It is my prayer that if there's anyone among us today, who has not received the assurance of salvation, now is the time. Do not delay. Do not procrastinate. We need a Savior. We need a Deliverer. We need Jesus. If you have not yet accepted Christ as your Lord and Savior, why don't you accept Him in your heart today? Let Him be the one to show you the joy and the comfort that comes through the salvation that He offers so freely. We invite you to pick up your phone and give us a call. A friend on the other end of the line is ready to minister to you. And should you have any questions, prayer requests, or are in need of counseling, we are ready to care for you. We also open our sanctuary doors to all our viewers and our friends. Come and visit us. We guarantee that you and your family will surely be blessed. If you enjoyed today's message, give us a call and the Sure Word TV will be happy to give a free DVD copy for you and your family. This is our complimentary gift to you as a way for saying thank you for joining us today. May God continue to enrich and deepen your service to Him. With Christmas around the corner, look back at the lesson you have learned today and remember that Christ, our Savior, is the reason for the season. Tune in next time for another episode of The Sure Word. Thank you and may God bless you. This program was made possible by the generous financial support of the PMCC Fort Watch U.S. District.